Hi, I'm Peter Cavanna and welcome to Appearances, a three-part little sermon mini-series for the internet for Easter. One part each day over the next three days, thinking about the appearances of the risen Lord as described by the writers of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And uh, the goal is to uh, really encourage you to read the different accounts over the days. And so today, I want to think about what Mark and Matthew have to say about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not cheating, putting them together, because they are pretty similar, as you'll see when you read the accounts. And here's the really interesting thing that comes out of Mark and then Matthew's account, which is this. An angel appears to those who've come to the tomb and says to them, go to Galilee and that's where he will see you. If you do your reading today, Mark 16, Matthew 28, that's indeed what you'll find, that uh, the disciples are sent to a certain place where they will encounter uh, the risen Lord. Uh, in uh, Matthew, we discover it is the mountain in Galilee where he, he appears to them. Well, I want to think about what Galilee might have meant to them and what it might perhaps mean to some of us. Certainly for them, Galilee meant home. They were going to go and encounter the risen Jesus sort of at home. And I don't know if that rings any bells with you for this particular Easter. <laughs> that the place where they were sent to meet him was in the place where they lived or at least the place where they had come from at that time they were in Jerusalem of course now they were going to have to make the journey north back home to meet with the Lord wouldn't it be interesting if over this Easter instead of meeting the presence of the Lord in a church setting we were to meet him in our homes just like these first Easter disciples did the second thing, though, that comes to mind when I think about Galilee, about the disciples and also maybe about us, is that this is where it all started for them. Galilee was where Jesus had come from, from Nazareth. And of course, he operated in, in various towns and cities in that area. I think notably of Capernaum. But this is where it all began. So in a sense... The Lord was sending them back to where it had all started. This is where they first met the Lord. This is where they first heard his wonderful teachings and experienced his out of this world power. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, one of the things this COVID crisis is doing is it certainly is making me think about getting back to basics. I came to Christ when I was 18. Uh, that was 1988. And uh, I came to Christ, uh, it was either a Wednesday or a Thursday, can't quite remember, but it was midweek anyway. And so I had my first few days as a Christian, having gone nowhere near a church. Now, it's perfectly right and proper for me to do so. Had I not been brought into a church maybe I would never have been consolidated fully into the faith so I'm not saying we shouldn't go to church but what I am saying is in my early days literally my early days all there was was me and God and the Bible can you imagine in those days I hadn't even decided what church I liked and what type of church I didn't like I hadn't worked out which Christians I'd go, I'd like and which ones I'd have to pretend to like. 
I hadn't worked out what worship music I thought was right and what other worship music I didn't like. I wasn't even scrutinising the grammar on the, on the overhead projector. All that was to come later. My point is this. There's something wonderful about being stripped back to basics. I thought of two words that might sum this up. Simplicity and dependency. Right now, you're watching me on the internet. You're not in church. You're probably not in church over Easter, wherever you are in the world. And yet I want you to know that the Lord is still very much with you. We have been stripped of some of the things maybe we've come to rely on. And maybe it's been sort of good for us to say, OK, it's me and my God or my family and my God right now. Before all, the, all those other complicated things which will soon be back with us before they all come back. And a deep dependency. We're dependent on him, aren't we, right now? Right here in the UK and around the world, we are dependent on him. Now, we've always been dependent on him, but I reckon right now we know much more that we are dependent on him. In the past, if we got ill, what do we do? Went down the chemists, the pharmacy, went to Boots. And normally they had something that would either cure you or help you. You go to the GP, he could write you something. He or she write you something that would either help you or cure you. That's not the case now, as we know. And so a deep dependency kicks in. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen in these weeks and months that lie ahead, but Lord, I am totally dependent on you for my very breath. You alone, Lord, are the giver of life. You alone. And so in Galilee, things are simpler. In Galilee, there is a deep dependency upon him. And what does Jesus say to them? When they get to Galilee... The last verse in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 20. Jesus says this to them. I am with you always. See you tomorrow. And we'll talk about Luke.